All right, let's get more on this. Bringing in Charlie Hurt, Washington Times opinion editor, Fox News contributor, Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com, Fox News contributor, and host of the Guy Benson Show on Fox News Radio. If you have one more job title, we'd be rolling up the credits <laughs> for the show. <laughs> I golly, I mean, it's... Uh, what, Guy, I'll start with you. What do you, what do you think prompted this? Uh, it's, it's, uh, is it that, because it feels like so little, so late. Yeah, it's like at some point they said we ought to get the president there, <laughs> which is probably what they should have said day one. And here we are day almost feels like 400 almost at this stage. If you're going to delay and delay and delay, at least have it coincide with the one year anniversary and say, well, I didn't want to be a distraction. I wanted to help as much as I could from Washington. But here I am to look at what this community is going through a year later. It was a year and change. There seems right. to be no strategy behind that. And when you see interviews with some of the residents in this community, they're like, we don't really want you here. What exactly are you doing here? It is way too late to pretend that you care. That the, pre so the pretending window yeah. has closed. And what, was, what makes it worse, I think, Charlie, is that every day, Kareen uh, Pierre was was asked about this yeah. every day, and and the reply was almost belligerent. It's like, you yeah. know, how dare you? The president cares. We'll check yeah. it out. We'll did. Uh, it was like defiant, and, and it's and it's, it's it follows a pattern almost yeah. of defiance first, and then at some point maybe bowing to the polls or something else. Yeah, they were contemptuous of any uh, suggestion that he should go. They were like, right. just drink the water. Right. It'll be fine. And of course, the EPA director was back then was saying, drink the water. It'll be fine. Um, you, you know, obviously, you know, in politics, shamelessness is a virtue. Uh, it's a it, it's your secret weapon. And you have to sort of almost give the Biden administration credit for being so shameless that they don't go out there and they wait until the election year when he needs to he needs their votes. And then he's like, you know what? I think we're going to go out there now. You have to sort of give him props for just being but that un, that shameless. I think it's Ohio. They don't expect to be terribly competitive there. Yeah. And other people have made this observation. I think it's hard to argue if this were a small community in Pennsylvania in Georgia, in Arizona, the political posture and response from the president on down from the Democratic Party would look very different. And if well, the demographics were different, 100%. which is which is even more disgusting. 100 percent. But it's the way these people run politics. That's heartbreaking, though. I mean, yeah. it's heartbreaking to think that uh, one group of Americans would be shunned if they're not potential voters. If they would, if you don't think they'll vote for you, then they don't yeah. count. Yeah, you're, you, if your state goes so far red that it's off the map, then we're not even going to come. And, and, and by the way, has there, ever, has there ever been any environmental disaster that politicians aren't willing to exploit for whatever purpose? Right. Well, apparently, finally, to we, look found, like we leaders. found one. You want to show up and look like a leader, and Biden decided to show up and look like a leader 54 weeks later? Yeah. Wow. Whatever it's been. All right. Well, we got to talk about the uh, the breaking news uh, today, right? Then, Charlie, uh, golly, it's uh, 350. I, the numbers are so mind-boggling; it almost it defies. And then, are they trying to break? Are they trying to break President Trump? I mean, it feels like, to me, it feels like ultimately, if I and I listen to the legal scholars yeah. and everyone else, do you have a, these appeal process, processes right. that maybe he'll be vindicated in almost all of these things, uh, most of them. But the financial toll, because I read somewhere already it's at least 50 million. I mean, is this just a sort of let's just see if we can financially gut former President Trump? Yeah, I think that that is it. I think it's also just sort of this blind rage where they can't even think rationally anymore because it's not I don't think it's actually hurting him. I, my assumption is that we will enter the appeals process and it's not going to wind up at 350 gajillion dollars right. or whatever. Right. Um, and uh, but but honestly, they're actually not only are they not like uh, helping themselves, I think they're actually hurting themselves. This sort of thing does, as Kellyanne Conway just said, I think it does engender um, a, a level of sympathy, even among, especially, most importantly, among independents who maybe don't like Trump, but they're they're open-minded. But when they see this kind, this level of ridiculousness, yeah. and then as you point out, the, with the circus going on down in Fulton County, they're just like, oh my gosh, I don't know, I don't know, I, I can deal with some bad tweets. This is absurd. Yeah, you know, I, and it's as corny as it sounds. We all still kind of believe. I don't care what side of the political aisle you're on, and truth, justice, in the American way, the old Superman thing, right? Yeah. And this is doesn't feel like truth, justice, in the American way, guy. Well. 
I'm not a lawyer. I don't pretend to be one on television. But you hear from some of the experts, and they're saying there wasn't really a victim in this case. The banks that said there yeah, were victims. Yeah, we're all Deutsche fine. Deutsche Bank is like, hey, you know. Everyone here is fine, and New York finds a way through the attorney general who campaigned on getting Trump to get Trump through these novel uses and of the law and legal bank shots like we're seeing, for example, from Alvin Bragg in this city as well. You know, it's so interesting. So the summary, Donald Trump and entities uh, control many valuable properties, including office buildings, hotels, and golf courses. So in the beginning, when he started running for president, today, he doesn't own anything. He's a paper billionaire. Right. Let's get those taxes out. We'll prove that he's broke. Now, no, the guy's fabulously wealthy and successful, but he stole it. <laughs> so, Charlie, they, they kind of shipped the goalposts a little bit, but they, they, had to, they had to admit that at least he was successful. Yeah, again, the shamelessness comes in here, too. If you're willing to switch, you know, go 180 degrees in your attacks, uh, that's an advantage for these people. But it is interesting the degree to which, uh, and, and this is the most important thing, which is when you undermine people's faith in the justice system, right. just the way Democrats work to undermine people's faith in public health officials yeah. during COVID, you don't get that credibility back, and that's a bad thing. Which is awful because uh, faith in all of our institutions has gone down yeah. the drain big time. Guy, Charlie, thank you both very Great much. Appreciate thank it. You.